Marcus Ang with the Culinary Quick Start Program at the Emily Griffith Technical College. How's it going? Good, man. How you doing? Doing all right. You and I have been getting to know each other a little bit, and yeah. as I've been doing the classes with you, I'm starting to learn a lot. Good. And whether anybody believes me or not, I didn't anticipate that or even think about I'm thinking wires and oh, batteries and yeah. stuff. And as it's been going, I've been learning a lot of stuff that I'm actually applying when I get home. That's great, man. Glad to hear it. It's awesome. If you want to get signed up for the Culinary Quick Start program and start your culinary career today, it's really, really easy. You go to themoderneater.com. And you click on the Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start tab, and there's a sign-up form in there. You sign up, you get on the list, you get connected. Next thing you know, bada-bing, bada-boom, you're making homemade pasta at home, and yep. you're, you're blowing away all your friends, or you start that career you want, and you're blowing away a chef when you come in with the skills needed to just jump right in like I'm ready to go. Absolutely. Uh, we just want to equip people to jump into the industry and kind of just... Uh pursue their their dreams when it comes to uh, a culinary career i love it man what do you think about rich's kitchen here it's great elevation Beautiful. isn't yeah, it cool you, man you use some of this equipment a lot of good stuff man a lot of good stuff in here so just tell me what you're gonna do and 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 do it so we're just gonna do kind of a very basic uh egg yolk pasta dough uh and this is uh, what we teach in class as well. So this is pretty much going to be the exact demo that I'm going to give later on today to our students. Um, we're just going to use this Hamilton Beach uh, mixer here. And all we're going to do is just measure out uh, double zero flour. Um, and this is flour that's milled just a little bit uh, more fine, um, but it leaves the gluten uh, strands a little bit longer, so you have a silkier, smoother uh, pasta mm -hmm. finish. You want that gluten. Um, so we're going to be using this. We'll just measure it out. So we'll measure out, and I like to use grams. We'll do like about 170 grams. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Well, that's what I wanted to do. A little more. <laughs> and what is this now? What are you putting in here? Uh, this is just double zero flour. Yeah, double zero flour. Double lot flour, uh, as it's known. So right here. Instagram. Um, soft wheat flour. Richo All right. Mm -hmm. And then in contrast with that, we are going to also add uh, semolina flour. Uh, and the semolina flour is made from a durum wheat as opposed to like an emmer wheat, which would be like a farro. So the semolina flour um, is going to give it color. Um, you can see it's a little bit yellow there. Um, and it's also milled to be a little bit more coarse. So it's going to give body and snap and that al dente finish to our uh, final product here. Yeah. All right. So we're going to measure out um, a little bit less of it. Um, so we'll do maybe 55-ish grams. Somewhere around there. Boom. Okay. Would you tell your upcoming uh, chefs that uh, a digi scale, digital scale, is something is a, that it's a must-have in the kitchen? Yeah, it really is. Um, we kind of talk about the difference between accuracy and precision. Um, accuracy is the uh, how close you are to a desired number once, and then precision is your ability to replicate that over and over and over again. So you can be accurate once, but in order to be uh, precise, you need to be able to replicate those results over and over and over again. Consistency. Exactly. A digital scale is the best way to do that. Um, so when we're baking, when we're working with uh, flour, uh, anything with a lot of flour in particular, I'll tend to weigh out my ingredients. Gotcha. Howard, wh Howard what do you know about this machine he's going to put this stuff into over here? You know, get like Justin you he... Just have, just do a dinner. He'd mixer. give us rooms. It's I mean, pretty nice. It's so got a slow start. I, I so said that'd be great. Start the mixer. It doesn't just come on with a blast and throw all your the, the movie scene of, <laughs> of, of, uh, yeah, of that. Slow motion, then it goes, okay, we're going. Let's get rolling now. So everything gets nice and incorporated evenly. You want me to do some eggs for you? It's <laughs> a nice built-in little uh, guard there to protect you from... Anything falling inside while it's working. Mm -hmm. so All right, so next we are going to do uh, just some egg yolks. And we're going to save the egg whites for another application. We can make a consomme with it. We can make a meringue with it. Uh, but definitely make sure that we're saving our egg whites. All right? Um, so the easiest way I've found to do that is just crack it open. And then just kind of filter it out through your hands. All right? So we have our yolks here. And for this recipe, we're just going to be using yolks. 
So it's going to be a richer dough. Oopsies. And this really is the best way to separate yolks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree. Here, let me crack. Let me crack one for you. You, you, because you, <laughs> you're already messy. So I'll do the, I'll do the leg work. All right, you know? appreciate that. And I just want to show off, you know. Do the one-handed technique. Yeah, there. but I broke that one. All right, that's all right. We can use a little bit of the whites. Whoop. Because the whites really just going to provide a little bit of a uh, water and moisture. So um, a little what's in, bit's okay? A little bit's fine. Uh, what we do want to make sure is that we're not getting the yolk into the... Um, into the whites. Into the whites. Um, especially if we're doing like a meringue or something like that, it's going to help, or it's going to inhibit the um, stiff peaks. All right, I'm going to go wash my hands really quick. Yeah, you do that. I'm going to right talk to Howard. Uh, Howard, uh, when it comes to... Oh, I could use a little bit of that. <laughs> when it when it comes to this unit in particular here, is this you know is this user friendly? I mean, if I don't know much about stuff, can I get one of these and use it and and Absolutely. be successful? Yeah, it's you know it's your typical, you know this is a commercial style what we call a stand mixer, but it's not much different. It's just more robust than what you would have at home. But technically, it works the same. It's a little bit more powerful. It's a little bit larger. It's got some nice built-in seats. Chef, do you have a, a tabletop mixer at your, at your house? Um, I don't. You don't? Is that I don't. Is something that you wouldn't mind incorporating? It's your, uh, definitely something I wish I did have. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be baking a lot more. I don't yeah, know how yeah, you yeah. get by without it. All right. What's next? So, um, in addition to our egg yolks, we're going to add uh, just a little bit of olive oil here. Um, again, just for a little bit of fat and richness. So, we'll give this like a tablespoon. Tablespoon generally around 15 grams or so. Okay. Mm-hmm. So give it another generous squeeze. And then just a little bit of water. Um, you could also just add like a whole egg if you wanted to. Um, but we're going to start with maybe, I don't know, 40 grams of water. Uh, just room temperature. Oops, a little much. But we can just add a little bit more flour. All right. So uh, is it that sensitive? I mean, to, to we can kind of see if it's sticking to the sides of the bowl here. Okay. Um, so the pasta is going to kind of tell us. All right. So we're just going to slide these. I've made a little bit of a well in the very middle of our mixer here. So just to kind of hold those yolks in. And these are some really nice looking egg yolks. So I think we're going to end up with a very uh, orange kind of rich looking pasta today. All right. I, uh I've enjoyed the homemade pasta during the culinary classes, man. Great. And if you guys are just tuning in, we're here at Elevation Food Service Reps. And right now, we're with Chef Marcus Ang from the Culinary Quick Start Program at the Emily Griffith Technical College. Uh, if you want to get signed up for the no-cost classes, it's a three-week course. Um, they teach you all the basics and some bells and whistles of, of getting, basically, Marcus, I guess, setting people up for an onboarding and a career in culinary, right? Sure. So you can kind of walk in. And you're not going to walk in and, ch and take over the place, obviously. No. But you can go in with the basic skills of, of a line cook or a prep cook. And when they say, hey, cut all these vegetables this way, sure. you're like, far out, I can do it. We want to teach terminology. We want to teach technique. We want to teach uh, some ba very basic recipes and then uh, identi like, uh, identifying ingredients, that kind of stuff. So, gotcha. Uh, yeah, I don't think you're going to be the executive chef in two weeks, but... Um, you know, but, you're definitely, but you might not be washing the dishes. I mean, even as or an you, executive you chef, washing you're always dishes. washing the yeah, dishes. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we're going to just turn this on to a pretty low setting here. Mm. I'll turn it on to one, and then just press this button, and then away we go. So you'll notice that it's really just picking up a little a bit of the uh, flour every time it spins around, and this is what we want. We want this to take a little bit of time. So Do you? Okay. Once I turn it on... Um, we're probably looking at around like nine minutes of knead time. Um, and that way we have a strong gluten structure, which is going to give us a really good 
um, snap or an al dente finish when, yeah, okay. when we're So uh, like my brain, pasta. when you turned it on, my brain automatically goes, oh, it's not going fast enough. Right, you know, because it's not, it <laughs> didn't grab everything all at one time, but you're saying yeah. like, nah, that's okay. Yeah, this should, and we could even turn it down a little bit too, like just let it take its time. And you can see it's pulling more and more from the sides there, but it still looks pretty wet on top. So mm -hmm. as it pulls all that dough, it's going to kind of look shaggier. Mm -hmm. And as that gluten starts to elongate and develop, um, you'll notice that it turns a little bit smoother uh, and more homogenous. Nice. So it's kind of we picking up a little bit. Yeah, we got the little, we're playing, uh, we're playing three card money in there. Yeah. You know, it's making three uh, nice little dough balls. I think, ah, oh, okay. there we go. So now it's starting now it's to gonna pick up a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And like we said, we can, if we need to, we can adjust the consistency of our uh, pasta, pasta dough just by adding, you know, a sprinkling of flour here if we need to. So I can see that it's probably going to take a little bit more flour. And then we can just add this incrementally. We're going to add a little bit more as uh, we're rolling out our pasta, but we want to make sure that this is one, uh, essentially just one solid dough ball. All right, so we'll just restart it again. And it's definitely um, a lot easier with the machine versus the hand. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And this way, you know, if you get all your proportions right, you can just set a timer go do something else, you know, like really be able to multitask. So that's kind of critical in the kitchen as well as being able to be in two places at once. Howard, let me, let me ask you about uh, this unit right here. So he's making pasta dough in there, right? Sure. I mean, I know this is a dumb question, you know, and chef, you can jump in too. <laughs> but what else would, it, would a tabletop mixer this size, this power, that sort of thing, what else would it be utilized to make? What so you sort can of make things? small batches of pizza dough. You can make cake batters, obviously. Um, it's got the power to do, probably the hardest thing that you could ask it to do is make a pasta dough because it's just such a, a dense, tough dough. You can make whipped cream. There's a, uh, there's a whisk attachment for that. So anything that's a wet batter, you can make meringues. Yeah, we you even have egg whites for meringues here today. And what, yeah. What, uh, what about ice cream? With you know, the whipping cream and that sort of stuff? You, well, okay, so you can make the batter, the, the, the base for that, but you're not really going to make... Uh, an ice jacket on that. You, have, you get that more toward a residential style mixer. Mm -hmm. But with the with the power and the robustness of this, you know, and one other thing that's kind of interesting, it doesn't have a switch. That's the number one thing that tends to wear out on these. We've got a captive touch, which is like your cell phone for the on and off switch, so that it, it's going to last. But you don't normally see that many things that you would see on a residential mixer. Just aren't all those attachments available for it? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a nice little unit here. Chef, how's that dough looking? Good. Um, you want it to be kind of moist, but not tacky. So I added just a little bit more. Yeah, I think this is gonna this is gonna do it right here. You see, that's it's a little bit shaggy towards the bottom of the bowl, but as as it gets kneaded, um, it's going to collect all that. It's it should collect all that within you know five or six minutes or so. But this is like the hardest part and the part that I don't like about doing pasta is having to knead it constantly. Mm -hmm. so, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Um, you make it look easy both ways because I've seen you do it both ways now. <laughs> and kneading, um, definitely a lot more work. Sure. Is that better? Better? Yeah. Um, I was saying, if you're in a position to shoot on down here to food service, uh, Elevation Food Service reps and grab yourself a tabletop mixer, what's this bad boy called? Hamilton Beach. This is the Ham Hamilton Hand Beach. Mixer. Uh huh. Far out. And so basically now, uh, Chef, when that dough is done, mm -hmm. you're, you're ready to go in a sense of, of, of rolling it out and cutting it, or do you have to proof it or let it sit? We've got to let it sit, unfortunately. No, that's um, all right. And that's probably the most critical part about making pasta dough is that you need to let it rest for at least half an hour at room temperature. Um, I'd say 
half an hour to two hours. Um, if you're going to be using it beyond that two hour window, you can do that in the fridge. But uh, really, we're just going to wrap this up and then let it hang out for half an hour or so. And I'll probably use this for our class tonight. In fact. Tonight, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll see you over there in just a few hours. Yeah. Um, well, I think we're going to call that good with the pasta then. Great. Because we're not going to sit here and watch it rise, <laughs> you know, right? Well, I mean, uh, if you wanted to, we could make a meringue as well. Um, I don't have a use for it, but. I don't know. How much, to, how much time we got? What, what does that say on there, uh, intern Taylor? How many minutes have we been going? 30? 38. 38? Yeah, I think we're going to save that for another time, all Chef right. Marcus. That's all right. I still got to get a lot of stuff in with Howard. With Rich O, he's going to be back on. We're going to make some cocktails. Is Eugene here? Has anybody seen a guy? Yeah, here? Eugene's here. Eugene's here far out. Eugene's here from American Bonded, and he's going to whoop up a couple of drinks from Woody Creek up there in Basalt, Colorado. So a uh, big shout-out to Woody Creek for uh, giving us some whiskey to make some drinks. And, again, I'll t he's going to tell you what the name of it is. I'm not. Um, but it is a version of an old-fashioned, I'll tell you that much. Greg's favorite. All right, so we're just going to get some plastic wrap here. Some plastic wrap. Oh, plastic wrap. Did you guys see me opening those eggs with one hand? No big deal. I don't know if anybody noticed that or not. I still have a glove on. Did you notice that, too? Well, you're ready to cook, except, yeah. I'm There's ready to go. Gloves. You always touch everything else, huh? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so you found some plastic wrap. Howard, when we're about to take a commercial break here, as soon as we see Chef finish up this uh, pizza, uh, not pizza, I keep wanting to say pizza dough, pasta, pasta dough, dough. Um, we're going to come back and talk to you and Rich. Uh, do you know what we're going to talk about? Do you have a piece of equipment you're going to show off? You or? know, I think he's going to talk about some the of the camera? some of the different cameras, and um, uh, he's yeah. got this thing, Belly of the Beast, that he's been doing with a lot of to-go products, so he'll talk about that. To-go is a huge thing right now, man. Uh, it's I everything. mean, right? It's it, and not only that, it, it's, it, it's, and I think that, you know, this is just my opinion, but I think it's going to go on uh, a lot it, it, after, you know, the COVID stuff where the to-go models that people have adapted seem to be far out That's and they're right. working and now they've got different revenue streams and so on and so forth. So, all that being said, Chef Marcus, are you coming back here? Yeah. Chef Marcus is coming back. I love back. he's cleaning up after himself. You yeah. know, one thing he pointed out, you have to let this rust. It's very supple dough to begin with, but if you tried to roll this now, it would spring back and snap at you and really wouldn't hold its shape. So you let it rest a little bit, then you can do whatever you want with it for the most part, and you get the shapes and the cuts that you want. How long, how, I mean, how long did, are we resting this? Did he said a half an hour to two <laughs> hours. You know, it's, it's pretty typical to make it in the morning, and then they cut it right before meal service mm -hmm. if it's in a restaurant. Chef, Chef Marcus, it, I mean, we're letting this sit out. Do we want it room temperature? Do we want it a little bit warmer? Do we want it a little bit colder? Room temperature is fine. Room yeah. temperature, so yep. we're calling it 70? Yep. You know, 70, and then you yeah, and like sit I was for saying, an hour. If you're, if you're going past that two-hour mark uh, of resting, or you know you're just not going to get to rolling it out today, mm -hmm. uh, you can definitely stick it in the fridge. Um, but I would also recommend that before you roll it out, you bring it back up to room temperature. It's just going to be a lot easier that way. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, uh, listen, I can't thank you enough for coming down and showing off your yeah, uh, homemade pasta. We're going to let it rest. Uh, if you want to get signed up for the Culinary Quick Start program, you guys, I'm telling you, it's real easy and the price is right. Zero dollars and zero cents. Go to themoderneater.com, click on the Emily Griffith Culinary Quick Start tab, and get signed up. And then uh, you'll see me and Marcus yeah, either in the kitchen or uh, online. Yeah, I'll see you later on. And I'll see Marcus later on. So uh, from Elevation Food Service Reps, we're going to come back with Howard and Rich O'Brien. We're going to talk Cambro. We're going to make some drinks with Eugene from uh, uh, American Bonded and with some Woody Creek uh, whiskey. That's what's up uh, to steal Greg's line, all, all's well in the world. <laughs> and uh, you're watching the Modern Eater Show.